To close out Black History Month, Hosto Center for the Arts and Culture hosted the Ebony Ecumenical Ensemble with their show, Songs of the Spirit. This is the 41st anniversary of the ensemble choir, which was led under Betty Forbes. Before the show, she was recognized for her dedication and leadership and was given the Lifetime Achievement Award. Now retired, Forbes has passed the baton to co-directors Reverend Eugene R. Palmore and Pamela Eatman Skinner. We are uh, coupling with Hostos Community College, which I used to work at, but uh, Hostos in putting on this wonderful event to celebrate Black History Month and to remember our music, our songs, and thus the name of our program is Songs of the Spirit. So never forgetting, and, and really with particularity, on this last day of February, leap year, <laughs> we have an opportunity to highlight the rich diversity of our song, our leaders. The music is great. The, the, the singers are really tremendous and um, great talent. So uh, we're very excited to be part of it. We're just hoping to have a great time and have some fun and to continue this legacy that Mrs. Forbes started 41 years ago. It's an amazing thing that in 41 years, she was the only director for this amazing choir. And then she entrusted it to Pam and me. And we just hope to just move it on to the next 41 years, if it's, t if it's the two of us or uh, someone else. But we just want to keep this legacy ongoing because it serves a vital purpose in our community, just in sharing the music of the African-American religious experience. Also recognized for his achievements was Roland M. Carter, known to many as the Dean of African-American Music. Carter opened up with his arrangement of the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Carter is the first recipient of the Betty F. Forbes Legacy Award. The song is so important. It's been known for ever, uh, ever as the Black National or Negro National Anthem because James Weldon Johnson was, who wrote the poetry and the text, was the field secretary of the NAACP in 1919, and the song was adopted as the national hymn of the NAACP. So that's how it got to be known as the, as the Black National Anthem. So they're doing my arrangement tonight, and I'm conducting, and I'm excited. Special guest artist Cyrus Chestnut spoke about his arrangement of the traditional hymn, Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho. I wanted to do something that, in, that embraces tradition, but the full tradition. Something that fuses not only the traditional part of who we are as African Americans, the classical tradition, but then there's also the gospel as well as the jazz tradition. To have this piece, this arrangement, reflect how we swing, but as well as how we can also stand and just, well, for us to be who we are. It was a great way to end Black History Month, leaving each person with the spirit of our ancestors who have led us to walk in victory. For Bronxnet, Happy Black History Month, I'm Veronica Guiti.